Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. I'm under attack, screams Maxine. Oath Keepers run her out of town with nasty surprise. Maxine Waters has literally gone to war with President Trump and the right. She hasn't backed off her rhetoric one little bit, but there are those on the right who are holding her accountable. I don't imagine she likes it and it probably drives her crazy. Over the last month or so, she has come out and incited harassment of people like Sarah Huckabee Sanders and anyone else who works in the White House. She has encouraged her followers to give Trump supporters no peace and to basically run them out of wherever they are found. It should not be allowed. Her call for violence will sooner or later get innocent people hurt. Hers is not a case for free speech. It is outright incitement to violence. Democratic Rep. Maxine Waters rallied the faithful to protest President Trump and his administration. Her supporters burned and stopped on an American flag. A few people cheered and someone yelled, This is not the American flag, this is their flag. They stole the flag from a pickup truck that made the mistake of driving past them. They opened the doors of the vehicle before it drove off and chanted Black Power. Outside Waters' California office, while others held signs that read, Resist. Their stated intent for the protest was to stand against a far-right group called the Oath Keepers. I've followed Oath Keepers for years and they are not radical. They are there to protect others when it is needed. Oath Keepers had planned a rally against Waters and her followers early Thursday afternoon. They did not show up and here is the backstory on why. Basically, there was a high likelihood of violence and the LAPD could not guarantee their safety. I'll let you parse that statement for yourself. From Oath Keepers Today, before our protest against Maxine Waters' incitement of violence was scheduled to begin, our advance team leader on the ground, Johnny Itleyong, along with the leadership of Magawa Girls, met with LAPD leadership. We always liaison with local police before any event. LAPD informed our leadership that there were already 50 Maxine Waters supporters in front of her office armed with steel pipes and baseball bats. And LAPD also stated there were three busloads full of other Maxine Waters supporters staged nearby, waiting for us to arrive before they deployed. LAPD advised our on-the-ground leadership that LAPD could not guarantee the safety of any protesters, and strongly advised that the protest not be held because of the danger. LAPD added that if a riot occurred, and we were attacked, the LAPD officers would withdraw and we would be on our own. Given the high likelihood of lethal force violence, steel pipes and baseball bats to the head are clearly lethal force, and out of concern for the safety of other peaceful protesters such as the Magawa girls, our advance team leader, Johnny Itleyong, made the decision to cancel the protest. Which only proves our point. You can't even hold a peaceful protest in front of Maxine Waters' office protesting her incitement of her supporters to violence, without facing the violence of her supporters, to the point of lethal force. Counter-protesters however did show up around noon. A few dozen of them. These included black power radicals, union workers, church leaders, activist groups, etc. No one was hurt and more glaringly, no one was arrested. Although this could have easily been reminiscent of the Rodney King riots. Waters issued a statement criticizing the Oath Keepers. The Oath Keepers would like nothing more than to inflame racial tensions and create an explosive conflict in our community," Waters wrote. See what she did there? She blamed the violence on the group that didn't even show. Nice. Oath Keepers intended to be there and to show Maxine Waters that they would not cower while she threatened people with the thought of being harassed in public simply for supporting the president. But it was too explosive and too dangerous to do so. They took the only choice they had and cancelled the protest. The police would not have protected them while possibly letting the left attack the group. It would not have ended well for anyone. More from Oath Keepers It should be noted that the protesters on our side would have been unarmed and the police would not have allowed them to carry any weapons to defend themselves with. LAPD made it clear they would have policed and controlled our protesters only, to the point of regulating how thick a stick we could use for a sign, but would not have policed or controlled the Maxine Waters supporters. As was done in Berkeley, twice, we would have been prevented from carrying pepper spray chemical mace, riot shields, collapsible batons or any other means of self-defense. The only Oath Keepers who could have been armed would have been our current serving or retired police officers, who have a right to carry concealed handguns nationwide under LEOSA, Law Enforcement Officer Safety Act, as our current serving and retired police officers did at Berkeley. We wanted to avoid any of our police officers having no choice but to use lethal force to defend themselves from attack by pipe and bat-wielding Maxine Waters supporters. Maxine Waters will find out that when you call for a war against those that disagree with you, they won't just take it lightly.
When Trump supporters stood up to her for inciting violence against them, she acted like she was the one under attack. It's part of the leftist playbook. Some of the bravest people out there that are former and current police officers, military veterans and first responders belong to Oath Keepers. They have sworn to carry out their duty to protect and defend Americans and the Constitution. They were kept from their peaceful protest by political leadership and the LAPD. But Antifa and Black Lives Matter are given a free pass. This was supposed to be a protest against Maxine Waters' incitement of terrorism and to take a stand for ICE and the Border Patrol, as they enforce the constitutional immigration and naturalization laws of this nation. Instead of being allowed to peacefully protest, Waters had them labeled extremists and blocked them, while having real extremists march in the streets. Oath Keepers won't give up, they'll find another way and they won't be silenced by the likes of Maxine Waters and her hatred of President Trump, the right in the United States. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe. Thank you.